the hottest topic in our longevity community, senescent cells. These aging infecting cells are a real threat to your longevity. They can age your entire body, infecting other young cells with aging. A serious, serious problem. What are senescent cells? Are they so dangerous for our longevity? For that, we'll hear Dr. David Sinclair and Dr. James Kirkland, whom, in my opinion, is the greatest expert on senescent cells. Now, let's start. Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Riman. Similar to cancer cells, senescent cells are renegade cells that hurt the republic of the healthy 30 trillion cells that are responsible for our health. Let's hear Dr. David Sinclair speaks about what senescent cells are. Senescent cells are zombie-like cells, the ones that accumulate over time in your body, probably because their epigenome gets screwed up. But what they do is they shut down, they stop dividing, and they start secreting inflammatory factors and also factors that cause cancer. Yeah, and so getting rid of those would be a, presumably a good thing. And well, that's it, what Fisid and Kersinin appear to do. They do uh, in the dish and in mice. Uh, and there are even some human studies now that show that killing off these senescent cells in the body can improve health and ultimately we think could extend lifespan. David declared called senescent cells zombie cells and he suggested that we need to kill them to live longer. I noticed that humans in general are obsessive with killing zombies. A lot of the video game industry is based on that exciting goal and now it's also the supplement industry. Seriously, those senescent cells are simply regular cells that used to be healthy and functional. They stopped being useful and now they are retired cells. To be more scientifically accurate, a senescent cell, it's a state, a state of healthy normal cell reaches as a result of reaching the end of the life cycle. Cells can become senescent due to age and also due to exposure to some chronic stress such as damage, radiation, mechanical pressure or even infection as a protection mechanism from cancer, locking the cell growth forever in case it will become cancerous later. And unlike cancer cells, and despite their belief in our longevity community, senescent cells do have useful purposes in our bodies. First, senescent cells play a role in wound healing. When you remove all senescent cells, wound healing slows down. Let's hear Dr. James Kirkland expand. It's been shown in some of the animal models where you clear uh, cells, some of which are senescent, but if you target um, P16 expressing cells and remove them, you delay wound healing. It's been shown that if, you know, by a group in California, that if you add back platelet drive growth factor, you restore wound healing. And it turns out that it's the senescent cells that don't have a SASP that produce that. So you do need them early on to help clear up the wound. You wouldn't want to give it right, the, these drugs right away. But in a chronic wound, they may help. Also, these cells have a role during pregnancy. Senescent cells produce factors in the last five days of pregnancy to drive the baby through the birth canal. And also, senescent cells can be important in cancer prevention and delaying cancer progression, producing toxins against cancer, and also call the immune system to check the area for other cancerous cells. Let's hear Dr. James Kirkland, in my opinion, the worst expert on senescent cells, explaining when senescent cells truly become a problem. The senescent cells are normally removed by the immune system, specifically by NK cells. Um, the belief is that this threshold phenomenon is due to the rate of spread of senescence exceeding the ability of the immune system to clear them. And then uh, once senescent cells begin to accumulate, they can poison the immune system and NK cells themselves can start to become senescent. So there's a threshold effect. What we're trying to do is get below that threshold. Uh, we find that if we get below the threshold, for example, even with drugs that don't cross the blood-brain barrier, we're able to have a reduction of senescent cells in the brain because the body's own immune system can start yeah. to take over. It's less poisoned by senescent cells and uh, there's less spread of senescence. So the problem is not senescent cells per se as much as their out-of-control accumulation when they reach a certain threshold. If they don't accumulate, the immune system can manage them, but lets them cross that threshold and they infect the immune system itself and the rest of the body with aging. They are aging infecting cells and become extremely dangerous, almost like cancer cells. They kind of stuck at the end of their life with no fertility or usefulness. 
and they also lost their ability on how to die. The immune system forgot about them. Their death button stopped working. So they are just hanging there producing bad communication that hurts the rest of the body. This is not good for your health. I believe this is an issue that Dr. David Sinclair referred to. They are not defective. They are a healthy process that can go awry. Therefore, our goal is not to kill senescent cells all the time, but simply preventing their accumulation. And a senolytic is an agent, either a supplement or a drug, that kills selectively senescent cells, not healthy cells. Let's hear Dr. Kirkland speaks about which people, at what age, benefit the most from targeting senescent cells. Uh, looks like there are situations, for example, in younger female animals where senolytics can actually do some harm. There's some uh, indication in some uh, studies of that. So I think, you know, mice generally, for example, uh, most mouse strains don't have much in the way of detectable senescent cells before 16 months of age. Why would you give senolytics at four months of age? They seem to be most effective uh, in the case of mice uh, that are naturally aging without um, that are non-disease models, when you give them at 24, 27 months, that kind of age, when there's an accumulation of senescent cells. Another note here is pregnant women should never take senolytics because of the role senescent cells play during pregnancy. And lastly, everything I said here is not personal recommendation. It's too early to know now, so please consult your doctor before you do anything else. Having said that, if you love this investigation, then I invite you to check the resveratrol investigation on this channel. Thanks to Dr. David Sinclair spurring interest in this molecule, we have a ton of scientific data on this supplement, and we need to know how much to take and when to take it for a lifelong habit of longevity and good health. You can find all the previous episodes in the description or in the pinned comment. Stay healthy, stay young, and see you in the next video where we uncover the mind-blowing secrets of resveratrol and its polyphenol family.